today's lesson for you folks while you're digging out your P3. Uh, real simple. We are going to do some initial vocabulary that involves helping you identify monomials, binomials, trinomials, and the like. So we're going to talk some polynomial vernacular uh, so that you'll be able to recognize those things. That's our first goal. And then our second goal for today is real simple. We're going to add and subtract polynomials. And that's fancy talk for something you probably already know a little bit about, uh, combining like terms. So it's very fitting for today's lesson that if you take a look at the warm-up for today, um, we're asked to combine like terms. I just kind of want to see where you're at with that skill before I take it to the next level. And we use this idea of combining like terms to add and subtract polynomials. So I want you to just take a minute. I'm going to walk around and start checking off those 10 problems you had last night. Um, I just want you to take a moment to answer these six questions, okay? You're going to combine like terms. And then we'll talk about the answers in just a minute. So let's take a moment and talk about your warm-up. I heard some good discussions as I was walking around the room. Sounds like you guys did pretty well with this, which is good. Uh, that's homework. Here are the answers to your warm-up. Uh, so I do want you to take a second. I know you checked them over with the neighbor. Uh, now you want to take some time to just make sure that your answers are correct. Uh, if, by the way, if you are watching this at home, because I'm recording you guys, I don't know if you caught on to that. Uh, they can't hear you. Uh, um, it'd be nice though. N no, like a smart board recording. Like basically right now, if you're sitting at home, you could see what's on the board and you could hear my voice. That's it. Um, but you would hit pause right now. Kind of help yourself out. Questions about the warm up? Comments, concerns? You got them all right? Awesome. All right. So, next up, like I said, we have a big, hopefully, uh, chunk of vocabulary here to go through. Uh, so let's take some time to talk about the words we're going to use in this section. So the first words that you have, remember our two rules for taking notes. What goes on the smart board goes in your notes. And then if you don't understand what you're writing, you should not be writing it down. You should stop writing and ask a question. And then we'll move on together as a class. Uh, the first word we have for today is monomial. You folks use this word more than you think. Monomial is basically a synonym for the word term. Official definition is a monomial is basically formed by a product of two things, uh, a number and a variable raised to a non-negative integer power. And I underline non-negative integer power. I know what Jared's going to ask, but I'm going to let him. Go ahead. Except for one number, yes. So I could have just typed positive. That would have been nicer to type, but it's not the same. Non-negative and positive are not the same. Do you know that? Non-negative and positive are not the same. Who could tell me why? Michael. Zero. Yeah, very good. So this particular set here includes zero. Whereas, Jared, if I said, hey, positive integer exponents, well, we would be ignoring zero. And we can't leave that out of our possibilities. You talk, We just talked about zero exponents, right? We spent a good amount of time talking about zero exponents, even at the beginning of class today. Um, it, for instance, 7 times x to the 0th power can be a monomial. That can be a term in an expression. But it doesn't really ever come at you that way. 7 times x to the 0th power more commonly comes at you as the constant 7. So we could say that 7 is a monomial. Technically, it does have a variable part attached to it. We just never really write it. Uh, another example of a monomial term might be negative 3x squared. And some of you might be sitting there and say, hey, lady, you said non-negatives, no negatives. But your eyeballs, when you do this on your homework later, you're going to be asked to decide, is something a monomial or is it not? To make that decision, your eyeballs need to go to the exponent, not the coefficient. It's the exponent. So here, do you see how I highlighted the two? 
2 is a non-negative integer. Non-negative whole number exponent. Same thing with pi x to the fourth. If you look at that one, you might be like, hey, lady, integers, whole numbers is what I need here. But we don't look at the coefficient. Your eyeballs need to go to the exponent. So if you're trying to decide if something is a monomial, look at the exponent. So some things that were not monomials, if you need some counterexamples. Uh, for instance, 7x to the negative second power is not a monomial because we have to have non-negative exponents. So see this negative 2 right here? Can't have that. 3x to the 1 half power. 3x to the 1 half power. That's like the square root of x. I don't know if you remember that from your Algebra 2 class or not. Um, 3x to the 1 half power. 1 half is not an integer. So you can't have that as a monomial. Any questions about the difference between what is and is not a monomial? Because you have like a couple yes-no questions, I think, in your assignment. All right. Next word. Coefficient. So if you look at 7x to the 0th power, negative 3x squared, and pi x to the 4th from the previous example, uh, 7, negative 3, and pi are coefficients. They're basically the number in a monomial that is multiplied by the variable. What's that? From right here. From heaven. <laughs> no. Uh, the degree. Oh, my smart board's not really cooperating with me today. Uh, the degree of a polynomial, just so you know, is the highest exponent. Degree is super important to be able to identify because it tells us a lot about the shape of a polynomial when you graph it. It's the highest exponent in a polynomial expression when the polynomial is written in standard form. So you'll see I just picked a polynomial there, 3x to the fifth plus 4x cubed minus x squared plus 7. I circled the 5 because that's the biggest exponent. So the largest exponent. So the degree of this particular polynomial is 5. Highest exponent. Next up. Standard form. Do you remember what standard form is a little bit? The official definition is coming at you. It's the order that we must write our polynomials in. Uh, our other goal, besides learning some new words for today, was to be able to add and subtract polynomials. Those answers must always be written in standard form. Basically, uh, you know you're in standard form if when you look at your exponents that are non-negative integers, they go in decreasing order. So you see I started off by just throwing out a general polynomial, like negative 3x squared plus 4x to the seventh minus 2x cubed plus 4. And I noticed that wasn't in standard form because the exponents, if you're looking, the exponents go 2, 7, 3, and then this guy over here, that's like x to the 0th power. So 0, eh, that's not in order, decreasing order. So we had to rearrange it a little bit. See this x to the 7th right here? It's my degree holding term, that 4x to the 7th. So that had to come first. So to rearrange this polynomial so that it was in standard form, I wrote it as 4x to the 7th minus 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. Can anybody tell me what degree this polynomial is again? Zach, you said it. Go ahead. It is 7. Very good. The highest exponent in the problem. Terms. I kind of actually already used this word a little bit today. Terms are the thing separated by a plus or a minus. So I have that plus and minus up there in parentheses. Uh, it's the synonym for mo uh, monomial. It means the same thing. So in the above polynomial, do you see how I wrote down the individual terms? I wrote down the 4x to the 7th and the 2x to the 3rd and the 3x squared and the 4. Those were the things separated by the plus and the minus. Last couple words. We have binomial, trinomial, and polynomial. And they're kind of related. Uh, a binomial 
It's just a polynomial that has two terms. One symbol in between them. Most famous binomial we're going to take care of in this class, x squared minus 4. Oh my gosh, we factor it, we graph it. So many fun things. Uh, prefix bi, it's like bicycle, two wheels. Binomial, two terms. Uh, trinomial is the summer difference of three terms. You might remember trinomials when you did quadratics. You had to do like factoring and AC grouping last year. Do you remember that in your Algebra 2 class? Some of you did really well on your pretest with that too. I was, I was impressed. Uh, so something like x squared plus 3x plus 2, it factors to be x plus 2, x plus 1. That's a trinomial. And then polynomial just has many terms. Questions about our words? So that's our first goal for the day. How can you tell a monomial from not a monomial? And then what are these polynomial things? What do they look like? Our second goal for today, like I said, is to be able to add and subtract polynomials. So now we're going to do some problems. So what we see up here is our first example, key point one here. It says adding and subtracting polynomials. Long story short, when adding and subtracting polynomials, more or less all we do is we combine all like terms. I like to teach things in steps. The first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is, uh, well, hey, okay, read the problem. Uh, and this guy here in example one, we're asked to add the polynomials together. And I can tell that because they asked me to find the sum. So I'm asked to find the sum of these two polynomials. More or less what I'm asked to do is add these two big groupings together. When it says find the sum, that's an addition problem. Step one, thinking back to our vocabulary, we know that all of our answers have to be in standard form. What helps me get an answer in standard form is if the pieces of my problem are in standard form. So if you do this step first and rearrange your problem so that the polynomials are in standard form, your answer will automatically be in standard form. So step one, write your polys. in standard form, decreasing order of exponents. You should always do this first. So if you take a look, uh, we want to just make sure we go decreasing order of exponents. If there's any missing terms, we can always insert a placeholder. So my first term, or my first polynomial rather, goes 8x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6x minus 2. 3, 2, 1, 0. That first polynomial, already written in standard form. Second polynomial, 3x to the fourth, minus 2x to the third, plus x squared, plus 1x, plus no constants. It goes 4, 3, 2, 1, and then uh, x to the power of nothing. That's also in standard form. I'm going to show you two methods. Method one I call the vertical method. Uh, do you remember doing, off to the sideboard, I have some scratch work. Do you remember when you learned addition and you had to add, for instance, like 123 plus 11? And you had to add like the ones place and then the tens place and then the hundreds place? Well, we can add polynomials using this same strategy. So basically, I just stack the first polynomial on top of the second polynomial. Here's how that looks. So I'm going to do 8x to the third minus 2x squared plus 6x minus 2. I'm going to stack that on top of the second polynomial. Uh, notice I want to line up my like terms. So all of the x to the fourths are going to be under each other. Uh, next comes a column of x to the thirds, and then x to the seconds, and then x to the first, so on and so forth. Here's how it looks. Uh, we're going to bring down our 3x to the fourth uh, minus our 2x cubed plus our 1x squared, plus our 1x, and then there were no constants in that second polynomial. So I can just add that 0 as a placeholder. So do you see how we have like x to the thirds under x to the thirds and our x squareds under our x squareds? 
basically we have our like terms just right above one another, so it's super simple. Now all I have to do is combine those like terms, kind of like we said in the beginning. So we have 3x to the 4th, and then I do 8x cubed plus a negative 2x cubed, or 8x cubed minus 2x cubed, however you want to look at it. That's going to be plus 6x cubed. Negative 2x squared plus 1x squared minus 1x squared. Uh, 6x plus 1x is 7x. And negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. I'm going to check my answer to make sure it's in standard form. Exponents go 4, 3, 2, 1, and then we have a constant at the end, so this is a good answer. Questions about method 1, because I'm going to show you another method real quick. Method 2. I call this the horizontal method. And what that means is that I'm going to use that associative property of multiplication to regroup the addition. So this is me using my associative property. And I'm going to use the associative property to regroup things. All I'm going to do is pair together like terms. I start with the highest exponent in the problem. The highest exponent in this problem is 3x to the 4th. So that's going to be the first term. It does not have any buddies. No like terms with it. So now I go down to x cubed. If I look at x cubed, I have just basically um, my 8x cubed there and my negative 2x cubed. So I can pair those together. Because I'm regrouping. Associative, who you associate with, is who you're grouped with. So when I use the associative property, I'm regrouping things. I'm putting parentheses in different places. Good question, Troy. Way to stay on the ball. So we have 8x cubed minus 2x cubed. If you don't understand why I write something, if you don't understand why I put a parentheses or a plus sign or a minus sign, those are the perfect questions that you should be asking. Well done. So we have 8x cubed minus 2x cubed. Now I'm going to go look for the x squared. So I have negative 2x squared in the one, and then I have 1x squared in the other. So that's those done. Take care of that guy, too, a little while back. Uh, then I have plus my 6x and 1x, and then I have minus 2 on the end. And then all you do is just pretty it up a little bit. I combine my like terms there. So with that... Simplify, you get 3x to the 4th plus 6x to the 3rd minus x squared plus my 7x minus 2. You get the same answer either way. You get to pick. And I'm curious about what you like better. What are you more inclined to do on your homework? We're going to take a little vote just because it's going to affect the way I do the next example. So which way do you like better? Do you like just stacking them one on top of the other? Or do you like rearranging? So we're going to take a little vote. You can vote for your favorite, method one or method two. All right, who likes method one better? Wow. Wow, that's like most of you. Okay, and then method two. Josh remains respectfully ambivalent. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're good either way. You're a flexible, laid-back kind of guy. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah, um, vertical it is then. That's what we're going to do. Uh, I did tell you I was going to teach you uh, two processes, right? Uh, addition and subtraction with polynomials. We'll multiply them uh, a little bit on Monday when you get back. Uh, so if you look at example two here, I'm asked to subtract the polynomials. Uh, here's the weird thing. We never really subtract in this class, mm, like ever. So what we're going to actually do is always rewrite the problem. As adding the opposite. So we're actually going to rewrite this problem as an addition problem. We're not going to subtract. So with that, uh, if you take a look, 
step one is still the same, I should say, though. Uh, step one is to make sure your polynomials are written in standard form. That's going to help you make sure it's in standard form at the very end of the problem. So x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, 1. And then we have x to the fourth, x squared, x, and 5 at the end. So this is, both of these polynomials are in standard form. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and rewrite this problem as adding the opposite. So do you see this big minus sign in here? What we're going to do is we're going to write it as plus a negative. And then we're going to distribute that negative into the parentheses. So the trick for subtraction is to write it as addition of the opposite quantity. So my first quantity here is already in standard form. I'm just going to write that out. And you guys like the vertical method, so we're going to stack one on top of the other here. We got 3x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 6x squared. Notice there were no x's, like just 1x, none of those. So I put a placeholder there, minus 1. That makes sure I get a spot for all of my terms in the next quantity there. Then I'm going to distribute that negative in and put that underneath this first polynomial. So if I distribute a negative, again, into my 2x to the fourth there, I get negative 2x to the fourth. Keep in mind I'm going to add this ultimately at the very end. I uh, distribute my negative into a negative 8x squared there. I will get a positive 8x squared. Oops. Uh, notice there were no x cubes. If you want to put a placeholder, you totally can. Uh, then I'm going to distribute a negative into my negative 6x. So that's positive 6x. And then a negative into my positive 5 at the very end. Gives me a negative 5. So do you see how my like terms are right above one another or above and below one another? So now I can just add straight down the row. So 3x to the 4th plus negative 2x to the 4th is 1x to the 4th. Negative 4x cubed plus 0x cubed is negative 4x cubed. 6x squared plus 8x squared is 14x squared. 0x and 6x is 6x. And negative 1 plus negative 5 is negative 6. So that is our answer. Questions about that? To wrap up today's lesson, you have two to do on your own. Independent practice, you have part A and part B. I'm going to pause this thing for a second.